The following program is a production of Truth For The World. Ye servants of God, your master proclaim and publish abroad his wonderful name, the name of victorious, of Jesus sextal. His kingdom is glorious, he rules over all. In this lesson, we examine the idea that love is kind. Love is kind and we'll be looking at it from a few different ways. First, we look at the idea that kindness takes humility. In order to display kindness to others, we need to have humility in ourselves. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, there are many different attributes of love, and the attribute we're focusing on today is kindness. Chapter 13 and verse 4 simply says, Charity, or love, suffereth long and is kind. Being kind to someone else means that by default we are doing something for others and sacrificing something of ourselves. Think about that again for just a moment. Being kind to someone else means that by default, we are doing something for others and sacrificing something of ourselves. As we see, love involves humility. Humility. In the next verse of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, continuing to talk about love, it says, Doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. Notice, seeks not her own. Putting yourself behind others, putting others first. Love is lowering yourself to do good things for others. Why? Because love seeks not her own, and love is kind. The act of kindness is one that is not just put to those we like, but also to our enemies. In Luke chapter 6 and verse 35, But love ye your enemies, and do good, and lend, hoping for nothing again, and your reward shall be great, and ye shall be the children of the highest, for he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. In this verse, we understand that we are to do good even to our enemies. We are to show love even to our enemies. Now, if we think about this in combination with the previous verse we examined in 1 Corinthians 13.5, love seeks not her own. That's putting others first and seeking what is good for them. But again, this is not just for those that we like. It is also to our enemies. Note the connecting word for in this particular verse. First, Jesus gives us the idea of being loving toward our enemies. And then he explains the reason why, which is that God is kind to the unthankful and to the evil. Have you thought about the idea that God blesses those that are evil as well as those that are good? The blessings of this earth are available to those who do evil as well as those who do good. Therefore, that is our justification for doing good to those who do us good and those who do us evil, because that is the approach that God takes. God is kind to the unthankful and to the evil. This verse specifically says kindness or the word kind, he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. So as we examine the attribute that love is kind, we should show kindness even to those who are unthankful, even to those who are evil, 
before God does the same thing. Notice a similar collect connection, rather, in the book of Ephesians, a similar connection in the book of Ephesians, chapter 4 and verse 32. And be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. The reason we can always remember to be kind is because God was always kind to us, even when we were sinners. We are to imitate God and become more and more godly in our lives. As we do so, we would show kindness one to another. Again, the connection here, show kindness one to another, be tender-hearted toward each other, forgive one another, even as God hath forgiven you. Kindness takes humility. It's putting the other person first. It's showing tender-heartedness, forgiveness, kindness to others, even if they are not kind to you. Jesus, our perfect example, shows us humility by dying for us, even when we were opposed to him. In Romans chapter 5 and verse 8, God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Did God wait till we were kind before he showed us kindness? Or did Jesus show humility and put others first and benefited others by dying on the cross? Jesus showed humility, and Jesus showed love, and love is kind even to the unthankful and to the evil, just as God is kind to the unthankful and to the evil. Kindness takes humility. Kindness also takes service. One dictionary gives this definition for the word translated kind. I play the part of a kind person full of service to others. That's from a pocket lexicon to the Greek New Testament. The idea we can see from this definition is that kindness can be defined by using words like full of service to others. And that's what we're thinking about now. Kindness takes service. In order to be kind, I must be good to others. I must be a servant to others. If I have the idea of kindness in my head, but I do nothing about it, is it really being kind? If a friend of mine, if I have an idea that if I could do something for a friend of mine because I have kindness toward him, but I never do anything, am I showing him kindness? Or am I missing out? on practicing and serving and showing kindness. In Matthew chapter 20, let's read verses 25 through 28. But Jesus called them unto him and said, Ye know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them, and they that are great exercise authority upon them. But it shall not be so among you, but whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. And notice that word, minister. It means to serve, to minister others, to others. And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister, and to give his life a ransom for many. Notice again the parallel between ourselves and Jesus. Why should we be ministers and kind to others? The answer, 
because Jesus came to be a minister to others, and Jesus is our perfect example. Whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. That's service. That's servanthood. That's putting others first. Remember that love seeks not her own. It puts others first. Whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. How can we practice love? We practice kindness. How can we practice kindness? We practice service, doing good to others, and putting others first. Why? Because that's what Jesus did. He came not to be ministered unto, but to minister, and to give his life a ransom for many. Jesus is our perfect example. In John chapter 13, Let's read verses 12 through 17. John chapter 13, verses 12 through 17. So after he had washed their feet, and had taken his garments, and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? You call me Master and Lord, and ye say, Well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example, that ye should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If ye know these things, Happy are ye if ye do them. Let's think about this example for a minute. Jesus, the creator of the universe, is here washing the feet of his disciples. And he says, I have given you an example. This is one example. You should do as I have done to you. Well, what is the example? The example is kindness and service and humility. Do you see all the things working together? Jesus humbles himself and takes on the form of a servant. He puts others first and seeks not his own by putting the uh, needs or desires or welfare of others before himself. And not only that, but he takes service. He acts upon the idea of kindness, and he washes their feet and says, this is your example. Do this to others. It may mean that you have an opportunity to wash someone else's feet. It may mean you have an ability and opportunity to help others in some other way. This is just one example. The lesson that is given are in the words of Jesus. It is in the words of Jesus. The servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. Jesus sends us out. And that means we are not greater than him. The one that is sent is not greater than the one that sent him. We are not greater. We need to humble ourselves as Jesus did. If I say I'm not going to serve others, if I'm not going to humble myself, then I'm not even willing to do what Jesus would do. I'm actually saying that I'm greater than Jesus. Jesus may have humbled himself and washed people's feet, but I'm not going to lower myself to that. I'm better than that. Jesus says you're not better than that. Jesus says you're not better than he is. He humbles himself and serves others. So should you. Again, he is our perfect example. Kindness takes service. It takes humility. And if you notice again the last verse in this particular passage, if you know these things, happy are ye if you do them. Do you know this? Do you know that kindness takes service? Do you know that Jesus is showing you the right way to do things, the right way to live? And he's showing me too. He's showing us putting others first is what love 
is about. Love has all these different attributes, seeks not her own. And yes, we're talking about kindness, but you can see these things working together and being all, all these different attributes are part of what it means to show love. And different aspects of love that may surface at different times. Love is kind. Love takes humility. Love does not seek her own. Love takes service. Love takes action. Love is kind. Kindness. Kindness takes humility. Kindness takes service. And also, kindness takes practice. Practice. The Greek word for kind is in the present tense, and that in Greek indicates a continuous action. If we think about kindness, it kind of falls into the same category. Kindness is not something to be done once, but is to be practiced and done again and again. Let's now notice Galatians chapter 6, verse 10. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. As you have opportunity, when the occasion arises, do good. But to whom should I do good? To all men, especially those who are of the household of faith. Not only are we to do good to other Christians, but we are to do good unto all men. And how often? When you have an opportunity. Kindness takes practice. It's not a one-time event. It's something to be done over and over as opportunities arise and as circumstances provide. Again, we may notice the example of Jesus and how he spent his life. In Acts chapter 10 and verse 38, it says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. What did he do as he went about, as he traveled from place to pray, place? Certainly he preached, certainly he taught people, but he also did good. The Christian is not to do good once or twice, but practice doing good. If we are to show the love of God every day, should we not also show the kindness of God when we have opportunity? Love is kind. Kindness is to be practiced. The Christian is to live a, lo a life of good works as Jesus did to seize opportunities to do good. When we look at the Word, the Bible, that God's Word, that God is given to us, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. Notice the Bible, the inspired word of God, is for doctrine, to teach us what is correct. It is for reproof, to teach us when we are doing wrong, to say that is wrong, you should not do that. For correction, correcting us to do what is right and stop doing what is wrong. To instruct us in what is right, but only so that we may have mental knowledge? No so that we are truly furnished unto all good works, so that we can put that into practice. Kindness takes practice. The love of the Christian life, the love contained within the Christian life, should be exhibited again and again, because love is kind. We are to be, the Bible describes, rich, in good works. Notice 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 17 and 18. 
Charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy, that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate. Is it important, as the world seems to tell us, that we get as much money as we possibly can, as many possessions as we possibly can, and therefore be rich in this world? The Bible seems to be more concerned that you are rich in good works, that the richness should be measured by the good works that you do, not a pile of money or a pile of possessions in which you can trust. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches. Riches of this world are uncertain. You can amass a large amount of money. You can pile up a huge amount of money, and then all of a sudden you could have a health crisis, and all that money will be wiped out paying medical bills. It's gone in a minute. Therefore, don't trust in them. Trust instead in God. And don't worry about becoming rich in the eyes of this world. Be rich in good works. Ready to distribute. Practicing love. Doing good works. That's what the Christian life is to be about. Because love is kind. And kindness takes practice. Practicing love and doing good works will help us to have good days here on earth. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 10 and 11, we read, For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. do good. Would you like to have a life that you love? Would you like to see good days? Part of that is doing good. According to scripture, if you're practicing kindness, you are doing good and you will love life. Remember that Jesus said, happy are you if you do them. When he washed the disciples' feet, he said, I've given you an example. The servant is not greater than his Lord. If you know these things, happy are ye if you do them. I think that if you are a servant, if you spend your life doing good works, if you work for God, work for others, then you realize the fulfillment of that work and the true deep meaning of that work. Working for money, uncertain riches, and possessions that rust and, and fall apart and eventually become uh, something you don't care as much about, it's not fulfilling. People that search for riches on this earth may never really feel fulfilled. Would you like to love life and be happy and see good days? The Bible seems to tell us you need to be rich in good works. You need to practice that kindness. You need to show the love of God and understand that what you're doing to help others, especially to help them towards salvation, is more important than piling up a pile of possessions in your basement, in your garage, or in your storage unit. Be rich in good works. Look at that again. Charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches. The riches of this world are uncertain. Instead, trust in the living God, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy, that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. Where are you storing your treasure, in heaven or on the possessions of this earth? Where are you laying up in store against the day of judgment? Are you practicing good works? Are you practicing kindness? Are you practicing love? 
Their conclusions, love is humble. Love performs kind deeds to those he loves as well as to his enemies. It's lowering yourself in order that you may do something good for others. That's kindness. Sacrificing something of yourself to do good to others. That's kindness. Love is humble, humbles himself, sacrifices something of himself in order to do good to others and be kind to them. Love performs kindness as service to others. And the Christian practices kindness over and over again and is rich in good works. The Christian that practices kindness will have better days here and move toward life in the hereafter. It doesn't mean that you're guaranteed that every day is going to be going your way. Everything works out in your favor, but at least you can know that you are doing things more rich and more fulfilling and more important. And you can move toward life in the hereafter. Are you ready for that life? Have you believed that Jesus is the Son of God? That he humbled himself to show kindness to others? That he went about doing good? That he gave us the perfect example and he gave us the perfect sacrifice? He offered his body and blood on the cross to pay the penalty for our sins. Have you believed that? Are you ready to repent, turning away from a life of sin to follow Jesus? following his example of love and kindness. Have you confessed that belief? Jesus said, If you confess me before men, I will confess you before my Father in heaven. To tell people that you believe he is the Son of God. And have you been baptized, immersed under water for the forgiveness of sins? Jesus said in Mark sixteen sixteen, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. And then continue living faithfully, practicing that kindness over and over and over again, because love is kind. If you would like a free Bible correspondence course, then write us at Truth for the World, P.O. Box 241, Bethel Springs, Tennessee. 38315, the United States of America, or visit us online at truthfortheworld.org. Don't enroll in the University of Hard Knocks. Learn the easy way with Truth for the World Bible College. Dozens of high-quality Bible education courses are available at truthfortheworld.education. Study on your own time and at your own pace. Certificates are awarded after every course. Plus, there's no enrollment fees, tuition, or charge for provided class materials. Why wait? Start your online study now and check back frequently for new courses. It's truthfortheworld.education.